Hi, and welcome to the Dynamics of Persuasion Advertising. Here's our agenda. We're going to discuss the subliminal myth, the psychology of involvement, high involvement, attitude functions, role of personality, near exposure, and association. Subliminal advertising means powerful advertising that appeals to emotional, even unconscious needs. Subliminal perception is perception without awareness of the object being perceived below the threshold of conscious awareness. The National Association of Broadcasters forbade its members from using subliminal ads. There is little evidence to support the claim that subliminal ads influence attitudes or behavior. One example of the little evidence that exists to support the claim that subliminal ads influence attitudes or behavior is the 1957 experiment by James Vickery, Drink Coca-Cola and Eat Popcorn. Vickery's study had no control, an essential requirement of the scientific experiment. Vickery never released his data or published his study. A handful of researchers confused subliminal perception with subliminal persuasion and ignore the preponderance that subliminal messages have few effects on attitude and behavior. Subliminal messages have few, if any, real effects. People have different thresholds for conscious awareness of stimuli. There is no guarantee that consumers see or interpret the message in the manner that advertisers intend. For a subliminal message to influence attitudes, it must, at the very least, command the viewer's absolute attention. It is possible that a subliminal message could be perceived on a subconscious level, but soon after the picture is processed, it is apt to be overwhelmed by the more powerful images or sounds. People have different thresholds for conscious awareness of stimuli. The belief in subliminal's impact exerted a significant effect. It is at the conscious level that subliminal ads may have the greatest impact. Perceptions of subliminal advertising impacts are more consequential than actual effects. People yearn for simple explanations of complex phenomena like advertising. The psychology of involvement. People process messages peripherally under low involvement, hence they are more susceptible to simple appeals. Under high involvement, individuals think more centrally and deeply. They think more about the tangible benefits associated with the product. Under high involvement conditions, people consider the merits of the product, connect the product to core values, and systematically process product commercials. Attitude functions. Some attitudes serve a utilitarian function. In other words, people purchase products to gain specific tangible rewards. Some attitudes serve a social adjustive function. In other words, people purchase products to gain acceptance from their peers. Some attitudes serve a social identity function. People purchase products highly involving goods to enhance their identities or set them apart from others. These involve association appeals. Some attitudes serve a value expressive function. People purchase products to express deep seated values. The role of personality. Individuals differ in the perceptions and evaluations of advertising. Self monitoring is the personality factor that has generated the most attention. High self monitors adopt attitudes for social adjustive purposes to help them fit into social situations. Low self-monitors hold attitudes for value expressive reasons, assisting them in expressing their core views towards life. Near exposure. Simple exposure to communications can influence attitudes. When communicators communicate a message over and over again, this leads to more liking. Some argue that messages are easier to process and encode when they have been seen or heard before. Mere exposure is most effective under certain conditions. It works best for neutral products and issues. 
those to which we have not yet developed strong attitudes. Once people developed an especially negative attitude toward a product, company, or politician, repetition cannot change the attitude. After a certain point, repetition leads to boredom, tedium, and irritation. There's a wear-out factor. McDonald's and Coca-Cola frequently switch slogans and change advertising agencies to defeat exactly this principle. The magic of association. Advertisers can link images using an indirect strategy. Association is perhaps the most important reason why advertising succeeds. Attitudes toward products can be classically conditioned through association with pleasant images. Semiotics, the study of signs and symbols, helps to explain the magic of association. When consumers are in a low involvement mode, they process ads through the peripheral route. Repeated exposure and associations serve as peripheral cues. For example, celebrity endorsements. Celebrities transfer meanings from their cultural identity to the product. Celebrities' physical attractiveness can also serve as a peripheral cue. This can work just by putting consumers in a good mood. So to review, explain the effects or absence thereof related to subliminal messages. How might the self-fulfilling prophecy relate to subliminal messages? For what conditions is mere exposure most effective?